on my face Hasn't stopped raining for days My world is a flood So, good afternoon everyone. My name is Luis and these are Alison and Israel and we're from Brazil and we're here today to talk about a very serious problem that affects millions of people in the entire world and most of you probably read the title already so you know I'm talking about floods. Now floods can happen absolutely anywhere in the world and they, they can affect both rich countries and poor countries. They can affect densely populated areas and sparsely populated areas and while they can happen in rural areas they usually affect urban areas more. Um, in the next slide here I have the technical definition of a flood. Uh, a flood is defined as a temporary condition uh, where normally dry land is inundated by water or mud flow. And there are many causes, possible causes, like over overtopped levees, uh, clogged drainage systems, and snow melt. But by far the, the most common cause is the overflow of rivers, lakes, and, sewer and sewers. Sorry. Um, sorry. Um, there was a... Uh, sorry. There was a, a huge flood that happened here in Chicago in 1992 and it was caused by the, the breach in the wall in a tunnel beneath the Chicago River. And there, there was a huge panic at the time and, and the, the Chicago Loop had to be evacuated. Uh, they were worried that uh, the, the water would reach the uh, electric cables and short circuit everything. Uh, many stores were inundated and they lost products and, and all. And so just, the slide says that just a few inches of water can cause tens of thousands of thousands of dollars in damage. And apart from the economical damage, there's also the social damage. Um, like uh, every year in the U.S., flood-related deaths are ab around 100, 100 deaths per year. And they, they, they usually affect mostly the homeless, but also they, they can inundate homes and, and, and stores and over 50 percent of flood related deaths are caused by like people being in vehicles their vehicle related um, so floods are a big issue and something has to be done to protect people to prevent them to correct them and basically we can do three things about this um, we can take corrective action we can create a system that will correct the problem after the flood has happened or while it's happening we can take preventive action. We can um, make sure that the water level doesn't go below a certain point. And we can make a system to predict, a predictive system to predict whether or not a flood can happen. And while the corrective and uh, preventive systems are crucial, uh, they can't work without a, a, a powerful predictive system behind them. We can't really correct anything if we don't know something's happening, something's about to happen. So. Um, what we're proposing here is a simple predictive system. Um, we're pr proposing a, a flood alert system that is simple but uh, effective and, and cheap. And it is composed by a, a mesh sensor network. We're using distance sensors um, like the, the, the mirror group, the following mirror group. And our, our idea is basically to monitor water level in the river or in the sewers in the lake and collect this data and transmit them to a remote server that can run uh, powerful algorithms and um, like this server will be a, uh, the powerful algorithms to predict the probability of a flood happening in, in a certain area and this system will be of open access to uh, universities, research centers, governments, any kind of competent authority that can take corrective or preventive action once a flood happens. Um, and our goal is to minimize economic damage and social damage as well and help authorities take uh, proper action. So this is the system overview of our flood alert system. Um, it's basically composed by three parts. Um, we have sensor modules that are going to be located by the riverside or the lake or the sewers. And these modules have um, distance sensors embedded in them. Uh, the idea is that we're going to measure the water level and send this data to a data central. And this data central is the second part. And afterward, afterwards, this 
data is sent to a remote server. So why do we need a data center on a remote server? Um, basically, we, we have m several different modules and we would like to send like all the information from that place at once. So basically, we have the data from the modules stored in the, in the central and the, this data central doesn't have to be in the river. It can be in a, in a, in a safe place, in a secured house uh, nearby and it can receive data from all sensors. And then it can send this information to, to a remote server that can be located anywhere in the world and this server can uh, run the algorithms needed. Um, basically the communication between each sensor module and data center is done via XB radio, uh, basically mainly because we can't uh, connect the sensors to the internet while they are in the, the river. And the data center communicates with the, the remote server via uh, internet basically. And now I would like to pass here to Alison and he will explain how each of these, system, these parts work and how they are assembled. Um, here we are starting with the sensor models. Uh, the, the responsibilities of these sensor models uh, is to monitor the water level of the river and to transmit the data that is collected by those, those sensors to us data center as Luis has explained. Uh, each sensor module that we designed is composed by an ultrasonic sensor to monitor the water level, uh, uh, how high is the water in the river, and an Arduino Uno to process this data that is being collected by the sensor. And we have to use an XB radio module to transmit the data to the data central. And finally, we have to use a rechargeable battery connected with a solar panel so we can uh, power the system without the need to use mains electricity. Uh, here's a picture that uh, shows how the ultrasonic sensor works. Uh, basically, the ultrasonic sensor has a, a ultrasonic speaker and a ultrasonic microphone. The ultrasonic speaker is used to send those, uh, uh, this ping that they call a ping, but is uh, actually a high pitch sound that is sent by the, the ultrasonic sensor. And then when this ping encounters an object, this, uh, this ping is reflected, creating an echo. And this uh, ultrasonic microphone is capable of knowing uh, uh, of receiving this echo and to know how long it takes the ping to be sent by the ultrasonic speaker and received by the ultrasonic microphone. In the code uh, of the Arduino, we receive this, uh, this time in, in a variable and then we use this variable to calculate the distance uh, that is calculated that way in this formula. The distance is the product between the speed of sound in air and, and the time it, it took to the signal to travel and the, to make the round trip. And all of this result is uh, divided by two because we just, we just want the one-way trip, not the round trip, because the one-way trip is uh, where the, uh, the distance we found the object. In this case, in our case, the object is the water, the top of the water. Uh, then when the Arduino gets the, the data, uh, it uses the XB radio model to encapsulate the data in a ZigBee frame. ZigBee, frame, uh, ZigBee is a protocol uh, to send data across the internet wirelessly. wirelessly. And, and then this data is sent hop by hop until it reaches the data central that is capable of uh, processing the data. Uh, each sensor module is located along the river uh, with the, center, uh, the sensor of the, in the top of the water. So they can be up to three kilometers uh, apart from each other. And then we have the data central. Uh, the data central uses an XB radio module to receive the data coming from the sensor. And the data central is uh, security, secured within a build, building near the river. They, uh, they use uh, uh, main electricity 
uh, to power the system. So uh, this, uh, we, re we use the XB radio model to uh, receive the data, and the, this XB radio set up the mesh network without the coordinator, without this data center, we don't have the network. And the data center actually is uh, Arduino Uno uh, that is connected to this XB and with a, a Ethernet shield that is connected to, connected to a router. This router is used to transform the uh, ZKP frame to an Ethernet uh, frame to send across the Internet. Uh, and then we have the remote server. The data center sends the Ethernet frame across the Internet to a remote server that can be anywhere in the planet. Uh, it doesn't matter the place. It should be maybe in a data center. And the remote server uh, receive this data and store the data in the server. And this and this data can be analyzed later to know, uh, to predict when the, the fluid is going to happen and whatever the application uh, is programmable for. Uh, the, the sensor also is capable of sending SMS to, to people that is registered in the system. Uh, we can send an S SMS when, we, when the water level passes through the, uh, a limit that we set up on the, uh, on the program. And passing through to Luis again to uh, summarize all the, the system. Um, so basically this is just a summary of, of what we discussed so far so we know where we are. We have three systems, the, the modules, the, the data central and the, the remote server. And th one thing that Alison did say is that the remote server, as I said, is going to be of open access, and any university would have uh, would be welcome to university or research center or government would be welcome to develop their own client applications to access this server. And um, basically, uh, we built a prototype, um, but unfortunately, uh, due to time const constraints, we could only focus on the two first parts. Um, we built the, the prototype with, this, with a sensor module and the data central, and uh, the, the remote server was a bit more is a bit more complicated to to implement. So that will stay for the future. Um, we're going to demonstrate the, pro the the prototype later, um, and we also didn't worry about powering. Uh, in the in theory, uh, like Alison said. The sensor modules are going to be powered by a solar panel because they are in the river. We can't connect them to mains electricity there. And the data center is going to be powered by mains electricity. Uh, we felt that it was more, more important to focus on the, the, on the data transmission. So uh, we basically built a, a prototype to show how the data is transmitted from the, 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 the sensor modules to the data center. Um, and I'll pass to is how here and he'll say about a few words about the future of this project and also we can conclude. So, so what's coming next in your, your project? Our next steps will be create a function to generate uh, maps showing the most affected areas and also, you add more sensors to include more functions such as pollution and radioactivity levels, and also using these features above, we will, we will develop a mobile application uh, directed to the end users so they can make plans about floods such as uh, create route trips, evacuation plans, and even move out. And to close our presentation, some observations and conclusions. Our system is relatively simple to implement. We use basically Arduino and the module is 
that are compatible to this kind of microcontroller. And the code is also open source. Anyone can get the code and build uh, the R version as they need. And we got the module sensors and the um, data central, but our remote server is in planning stage. It's the most complex part of our job, so it takes a while to get done, so we're, we're working on it. And predicting the alert in the population the authorities to um, uh, about floods, the first step to prevent and take corrective actions. So we hope that our system may serve as base to future future projects uh, to prevent floods and save lives and assets of people. I will pass the word to my my colleague Luis. He will close the presentation. So basically this concludes our presentation. Um, I'd like to thank you all for your time and patience and give special thanks to Professor Hajek and Dr. Tomo for their, their help and support in this project. I hope you all have a good day and thank you. Slowly I become one with the mud. But if I can't swim